Thank you for being with us here this morning, for those that are present with us here in the sanctuary and that have uh, been with us throughout the Sunday school hour and uh, as now we enter our worship service. And for all those that are joining us now uh, uh, to praise our Lord in our worship time from online, we're glad you're with us and thank you for your faithfulness uh, there. So let's begin our time of worship here and giving the Lord the honor, praise, and glory for all that he continues to do in each of our lives as we sing praises to him. Phyllis, come and lead us. with us as we sing he keeps me singing and sunshine in my soul Jesus, 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 sweet. 
Appreciate that message and song. You know, I think Michael was talking about last week, life is uh, a little bit different. Uh, I know that every one of us, have uh, we have realized that, certainly. I know as we were away uh, for a few days last week, and uh, life is different. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, someone said, an old, th an old saying says, when life de uh, get deals you a lemon, you make that lemonade. We have to do that, don't we, sometimes? Uh, so we do do what we need to do, when we need to do it, and how we need to do it. And I'll promise you that God's going to give us the strength and the grace and the direction uh, to get through it. God's hand is still in the world, folks. God's hand has never left us. It won't leave us. And we need to be just assured of that, folks, that God is right there for us continually and steadfastly. Those of you that have a bulletin, you look in the bulletin. We're going to be in the Acts here. And uh, I know I uh, was there a little bit earlier here a number of weeks ago, uh, whether it was online or what have you. But I want to look at a couple verses here and uh, where I wanted to emphasize just a little bit here, Acts, the, the ninth chapter. And uh, I'm going to read the first uh, couple verses, 9 and 10 here, if I could, or, or 1 and 2, rather, if I may, uh, here. And I'll let you turn there. I hope this morning that you're gonna that you are thank that you have thanked the Lord that we're able to call God our Father. That's something special, folks. Is that you and I have the privilege of calling our Heavenly Father that He is He is our Lord and Father. Thank you, God, that we have been reconciled by the cross to God. Because, folks, think about it. What a, a fix we would be in if it was not for the re reconciliation that Christ brought to us, that you and I can be, be in that right relationship with our Father through Jesus Christ, and that he did so through the cross. I'm thankful today that Jesus Christ is our righteousness, and that he is that which that brings to us that which is needed at just the right time at just the right moment, in just the right situation, that Christ is there doing, doing all that we need in our community. For those that are online, we had a 34-year-old young man, uh, a wife and uh, children left behind 
died in a tragic accident. I pray for that family. We have, we have continued to pray for them. And uh, Brother John, we continue to lift them up and carry. We lift that family up to, to them. You know, we don't know what's ahead. I only know that God is going to be wherever I'm at. The Father that I said that you and I, that it's a privilege that we get to call God our Father. So important. I pray here today that the Holy Spirit is going to do something in your life and in my life that cannot be measured. It cannot be explained. But that God's presence is right there upon your life and my life. That's the power that God has and God is seeking to give to us and for you and I to feel his presence in such a mighty way. I'm grateful that God is here with us today and that he's not only speaking to us corporately as a body of believers, but he's speaking to every man, woman, and child. That, that's the Holy Spirit. That's God being there. That's God that he is seeking to guide our words, guide our worship, guide our thoughts, guide our hearts as we're drawing together in the oneness of the Lord. Let me share with you here out of the ninth chapter of the book of Acts. I'm reading out of King James of whatever translation is fine. Listen to these words, if you would. Verse 1. And saw yet breathing and uh, uh, and threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord went into the high priest. Stop right there for just a moment. Saul of Tarsus, very rough, rootless man. But look where he's at. The best of religion that had to offer. And notice I said religion. Here he was. He was breathing hard and difficult words. Breathing threatenings and even slaughter. And look who it's against, against the disciples of Christ. And he came into the high priest. Saul was, thought he was doing what he was supposed to do. Look at verse 2. Here's what he went to the high priest for. And desired of him letters to Damascus. Remember, this is where he had his encounter with Jesus, Damascus Road. To the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, any believers, any in that fashion or that way, whether they were men or women, saw Tarsus, he wanted just to find whoever was believing or proclaiming Jesus Christ Lord of his or her life. Now listen to what else as we continue reading verse 2. Here's what he wanted to do. That he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. Now bound, we think about, folks, we think about maybe handcuffs or something in this modern day. Uh, bound, I'll guarantee you, it was not very pleasant. And Saul was out to get them. He wanted to see, did anybody know any family or any group? And if there was a group or families, tell me their, not only their identity, but tell me where they're at. Me and my entourage, Saul was saying, we're going to get them. And we're not going to take them back to their local community. We're going to take them back to Jerusalem. We're going to bring them to Jerusalem bound. And what was the charge? Proclaiming Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Where was he getting this information? The high priest. Let's think for a minute about the high priest. Jesus said, he's our great high priest, isn't he? Now, but the high priest in that day oversaw things. Go behind the holy of holies. You remember that massive veil that... When Christ cried out, it's finished. It rent from top to bottom. It was useless. It could never be repaired. No more would a high priest or someone have to take the sacrifice back behind the Holy of Holies and to offer that sacrifice for the atonement of your family's sins in your life and your family's life no longer. 
This was who Saul of Tarsus was going before. And he was wanting to get the information that he needed so that the cause of Christ, the name of Christ, that it might be annihilated or removed from anyone's mind or memory. And certainly they would not do any proclamations or proclaiming that Jesus Christ is Lord and that He is my Savior and that His power is imminent. That was not going to be proclaimed and if they thought it, they were certainly not going to bring it out in the public. His desire was to shut down the name of Jesus. Oh, many have tried throughout these centuries since Christ has been here. From book burnings to bands. But the name of Jesus is still proclaimed, folks. He still sits on the throne. He's Lord of all. He's coming back, folks. He's coming back. Let me share a few other things here. We're not going to get through all this scripture, but I wanted just to, to give you a, a little insight of where Saul of Tarsus was, getting ready to be named Paul. Let's think a little bit. I think the time has come, folks, that you and I need to get serious about eternity. You know, a lot of times we think eternity is way out there. I used to think that. Uh, teenager. I got all the time in the world. And you know what happened? I woke up one day and I realized mom and dad's already in heaven. Grandpa and grandma are there. I'm, ne I'm the next one. Or my brothers. Or my family. Where did time go? The Bible talks about that time, certainly, it does flee, and it flees so quickly. It's so important that we are continually lifting Christ up in your life and in my life. We're closer today to stepping into eternity than ever before. Ever before. Let me ask you a few questions. How are you living? Where's your significance? What's important to you? Saul of Tarsus, he was on a rage. Anybody would mention Saul of Tarsus, their knees would shake. They knew what Saul was able to do and was willing to do. And that he, he would go to whatever lengths to stamp out the name of Christ. How are you living? How are you walking with Jesus or with God our Father? Where's your walk? What's it like? Is your walk where it needs to be? Is your life where it needs to be? Does your life reflect eternity in your mind and your heart? Cindy and I, this past week, we spent a, uh, a day and... Uh, a number of hours at night you're going to see. In fact, I think one of our things that's going to be done, or a couple of those, will be a full moon rising out of the ocean. Beautiful. We had to finally figure out. We had to figure out photography uh, at, at the beach is totally different from photography around here and the mountains because of the wind uh, and the light and the lack of light. We finally got it figured out and so forth. The type of relationship that you have with Christ, it needs to be of the most serious nature, folks. Because you're talking about the eternity for your soul. And I'm talking about the eternity for my soul. We all stand face, will one day stand face to face before Christ as individuals. We can think about what mama or dad or grandpa or grandma and what they did. And they may have, I'm sure they did some wonderful things. But God's going to look you and I not only in our face to face, but God's going to look into our hearts and our souls of what have you done and what are you doing 
with Jesus, my only begotten son. What significance has he played in your life? Have you allowed the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit's present, presence to do mighty works? Is your faith one that is too easily taken off and put to the side? Or is it a faith, like a few weeks ago we talked about how you need to be standing on that solid rock. You need to be where you're standing to where Jesus Christ is that foundation. That when all else is shaking around you, that is solid. That it will not fail you. You'll see a few of these things that we film. What I call the fourth floor of this building. It's a three-story building, but they stuck a, off uh, a, uh, uh, they called it a sun deck, uh, but a very tall person might have a hard time uh, 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 laying out to get a suntan. Uh, but we filmed that off from the fourth story. Uh, it was a little scary about this. Uh, there. Uh, you know, why? We shake a little. The wind kind of would, you could feel a little bit, and it, it's, it's not, wasn't that older building, but it was old. It, it had some age on it. What about in your life? We got a little age on us, most of us do. Is your foundation firm? Is it strong? Or is it one that when the winds come, it shakes it. You see, what Jesus Christ wanted, and hear what Saul was encountering, he was encountering devout Christians, children of the Lord, that they were, were not ashamed of the gospel, even though such ones as Saul of Tarsus might come and bound them and might even take their life. But they were still willing to take a stand for Jesus Christ. One of the things mentioned in Sunday school was where, you know, I think one of the things that w where we went wrong was when we began to tear down the Ten Commandments. We began to take prayer out of the school. We began to take, an op take away from the rights of our teachers when a child is having a bad day or a difficult day of being able to put our arms around that child and to be able to hold them and to be able to kneel down and to pray with that child. I've had the privilege of teaching at a private school for a short time on a part-time basis for a couple of years. I'll never forget a young lady came into our class, ninth grader. She was saddened by the events and things that were going on personally. I was grateful that I had the privilege of being there and that her path to her life and mine, they were together. And we brought that small nine, I think there's eight or nine in our class we were able to stop exactly what we were doing and we were able to sit down and to say, I'm praying for you and not just say that. But we were able to stop class and we were able to bow down and bow our knees down on the floor and to talk to the Lord about it. Folks, that's where, what I think in a lot of ways we as Americans, we've let slip away. That uniqueness and that being a devout child of God. And the importance of that. So be sure that you and I keep reminding ourselves we need to be warriors for Christ. A warrior carrying forth the gospel, the name of Jesus, without fear and without reservation. Could today be the moment that Jesus has called you and I to resolve that from this point forward, I am not ashamed of Christ and when I have the opportunity and the place in which that I'm able to, to proclaim Jesus, that I'm going to do it without reservation. Now let's think about what the devil was doing here. We read the first two verses here in chapter 9 in Acts. You know the devil was really having a heyday because he really wanted to you think about as human beings. We'd do anything for our families and for our children. But look who Saul of Tarsus was after. He was after every man, woman, and child. He said, I don't care. If they're proclaiming Jesus and they're taking a stand for Christ, I'm coming after them. 
and I'm going to bring them back before you in Jerusalem, great high priest. That's what I'm going to do. And Saul of Tarsus was serious about that. Are you ready to face God today? There's a certainty that every one of us will and every person will. I want to not just hope that I'm going to heaven. There are many people that are resolved, well, preacher, I hope I'm going to heaven. I know Jesus Christ is my hope. He's my resurrection. He's my strength. He's my power. But also I know in that same thing, I want you to know and Christ wants every person to know that, that we are going to be with him forever. I want more than just I suppose that I'm going to be there. Or I'm crossing my fingers. You ever crossed your fingers for something? You know, I think sometimes the world, uh, we want to do that. Hey, crossing fingers won't get you to heaven, will it? It just won't happen. So it's got to be more than that. You know, Jesus would say, and, and the scripture records, that we've got to cross, we've got to pick up every day. And we've got to carry it. What's that mean, to pick up a cross? I think sometimes we really we fail to really realize that there is going to be a struggle. I said a little bit earlier, children of the Lord, we need to be prepared to be warriors. Carrying the gospel, doing what the world needs now. If ever the world needs to hear Jesus, it's today. I had an opportunity to tell a, a priest there in the Isle of Palms. I don't, I don't think he appreciated it too much, but uh, I, met, I, met, I met him. He liked to be called Father, and, uh, and I told him, I'm a Southern Baptist preacher. And I've been a pastor for, for pushing now 45, 50 years. And uh, I, I'd like to film a little something out here in, in front of your building. And uh, I told him I'm, I'm saved by Jesus Christ. And, uh, and uh, so uh, he didn't proclaim me anything back to me. I was expecting a comeback, but he didn't. Very nice. Incidentally, I did film that. I'm not sure we'll be able to show it because of some of the sound uh, difficulties we were having there. But you know, I don't care where you go. I don't care who you meet and who you see. Jesus needs to be on the forefront of your life. You need to be willing to talk about Jesus. There's no doubt that there were some in Saul of Tarsus' day. There were some families that because of the threats that Saul and others were making, and they were real threats, rest assured, it was real that they, they were some that no doubt it hindered and it shut up some of their voices. I don't want to see that happen in 2020 because, you know, I'm convinced that there's a world out there and there's a county called Union County and there is a state called North Carolina and there's a nation called the United States of America that needs to hear and that a lot of the solution for what our problem and what ails us Folks, it's not going to be found in Washington, D.C. or anywhere else. It's going to be found in Jesus Christ. I'm convinced of that. And we need to not be hushed. Are you a professing Christian or are you simply one that has given his or her life to Christ and then for whatever reason you stopped? Are you at a place in your life where nothing seems to satisfy you? Folks, that could be the Holy Spirit that is really doing a work in your life, making that lack of peace. God will deal with you. He'll deal with me and he'll deal with every man, woman, and child here through the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Are you longing for something that you're not sure exactly what it is? Then I would ask you, are you operating your life outside of the Spirit of God? Are you operating your life outside of where you know you ought to be? And that is in that close-knit relationship with Christ, with Him as Lord and Savior. I said at the very beginning, it, I, it is such a privilege that we're able to call our Heavenly Father, Lord. Thinking about Jesus is not enough, folks. You and I will never have peace until we surrender 
or give ourselves up to the cause of Christ. There are times in sin years and, and, and my life that we were seeking and praying and asking for God's intervention in certain circumstances or situations. And you know what the Lord would tell us many times? And we'd find out later God was simply waiting on us. Give it to me. There were a number of instances where finally we realized that God was not going to act on our behalf. It wasn't that God didn't care. It wasn't that God did not know the needs that Cindy and I had. It was simply that we were unwilling to totally surrender that to God. I'm convinced that God is waiting many times in your life and in my life. He's waiting on you and I to give it to him. And giving doesn't mean that I bring it today and then I pick it back up and I walk back out the door and I, and I struggle with it just like I did before. I still struggle with it. Bring it to God and leave it. And trust God. I'll promise you that there's nothing that God can't handle. Amen? He certainly can handle it. He's more than able to do that in your life and in my life. Saul of Tarsus asked the questions. Of Jesus, when he encountered him later on, and if you read, and I encourage you to read the rest of the scripture, who are you? And he found out he met Jesus, the very one that he was persecuting, the very one that he was bringing families before the hierarchy of that day. That sometimes he was literally stoning them to death. But also Saul of Tarsus would ask Jesus the question, what do you want me to do? You got to know Jesus, not halfway, not half hearted. You got to know him. And you've also, you got to seek to find out and to figure out what Jesus Christ is wanting to do in your life and in my life. Folks, let's think about it for a moment. God's got a plan for your life and my life. He's got a plan, He's got things that you and I need to accomplish. And as long as i got breath, there's something I'm, that I'm going to be able to do in the name of Jesus Christ. There are some things I know that as every year goes by, I, I can't do them quite as quickly or as effectively as I once could. I wish I could, but I can't. I'll promise you that God knows your limitations and my limitations, and he's all right with it. He made us. But he is seeking for you and I to... to to answer those questions for us in each of our lives. Our whole lives must seek to glorify God. Notice I said, folks, our whole life, not part of it. I think this is where so many times we want to give, we want to give God just a piece of us instead of our entire life and entire being. Folks, that's not what God asked for. You and I will never have peace until you and I get rid of the sin and the baggage that every one of us carry. You're going to struggle until you release it to God. Many hear the word and experience to a certain degree what Christ is saying in their lives, but they let the storms hit, and if we're not careful, we'll go back to our old ways. We'll go back to our old habits. Failing to put our trust and faith in the Master to carry us through. That's a tendency, folks, of the flesh that comes so many times got to be cautious why is, is that is there so many of us in our lives that we seek this over and over and we beckon the world's call instead of the call of Christ like we know we ought to scripture records Jesus said I got a problem with you you've lost your first love remember the letter to the church i got a problem with you. You lost your first life. Could that be said about our own individual lives today in America? Could it be said that in our own lives, maybe that we are disregarding Christ to a point, not completely, not totally. See, Satan loves to be able to hinder you and I from carrying out the task that God has placed upon your life and my life Satan loves we can hinder it. See, he can't pluck us out of God's hand, but he can hinder what we can do and the influence that our lives can have on others. It's so important, folks. 
Jesus very quickly and very precisely said, your love for me, your commitment, is either real or not. In fact, a little bit further in the book of Revelation, say, I, I, I would hope that you're either cold or hot, not that you're lukewarm, because Jesus said, what he do with lukewarm? He said, I'll spew you out of my mouth. Every day, somebody hears the gospel for the last time. You pick up your newspapers. If you get a paper or you look online, every week you're going to see a, a, a young person that I hope and pray that he or she knew Christ. I will guarantee you that they never thought that'd be the last time they'd ever have the opportunity to hear the gospel. I pray every one of us can be back in God's house this week or we're going to listen on Wednesday nights uh, or to on Fridays when you get Sunday school lessons. I pray that you're going to, we're going to have an opportunity to be back. Is there any guarantees of that? No. Time's not mine. Neither is it yours. So every day somebody hears the gospel for the very last time. No one here today knows with certainty that we'll ever hear the gospel again. The time is God's, not ours. As Jesus is calling you, I challenge you, please don't fight it. Jesus stands ready here this morning to help you and I to deal with the issues and the concerns that life is confronting us with. And listen, folks, I know all of God's children got problems. Is that not right? We all have concerns. We all have difficulties. We all have struggles. We all have times in which that we wished we could just snap our fingers and it'd go away. Jesus stands ready to help us deal with the issues and the circumstances and the sin in every one of our lives here today. He's asking you and I and me to release all this stuff right now. At some point, each one of us, we have to say, this is the day. When are you going to do it? When are you going to deal with eternity? When are you going to deal with Jesus in the way that he is deserving and desires to in every one of our lives. I'm not talking necessarily, it, it include, it's all inclusive of salvation. But see, I'm convinced that God doesn't just stop with salvation, that he's continually seeking you and I out to do that which is right. You see, these followers that Saul was dealing with and he was seeking to go after, they were committed converts of Jesus Christ Followers of Christ, that was who they were dealing with. And Saul of Tarsus, they'd gotten past that salvation, and they were onward Christian soldiers, as the old hymn goes. The trump of the Lord's going to sound one day. Jesus is going to re reappear. He's going to come back for believers. Some are going with him, sadly, but there's some that are not. You see, we have to come to that point that we need to make that decision. This is the day that Jesus comes into my heart and life. Or as a child of God already, this is the day that I get more serious with Christ than I ever have before. That my voice and my heart and my belief and my faith will not be silenced, but I will take that firm stand in the name of Jesus Christ, I will not cease to pray in the name of Jesus. Let me repeat that. I will not cease to pray in the name of Jesus. For he is my Lord. He is my Savior. He's Lord of all things. He's got to be Lord of all things in your life and my life, folks. He has to be. Nothing else is acceptable. He's got to be Lord of all. 
Otherwise, he's Lord of nothing in your life and my life. We're either all in or we're all out. So I ask you, in your life, will you come today? Will you let this be the time in your life that I give it all to him? And for most of us, we settled a long time ago about eternity. To most of you, we're talking about after salvation, what am I doing with Jesus? How far am I going with Christ? Whether it's salvation, recommitment, or whatever God is leading you and I to do right now, or the person that God is leading us to be, do make it right now. Will you make this today? when everything changes in your life. Will you make this today? Christian, child of God, most of us here, where are you at in your stand with Jesus Christ this morning? Now this is his altar. I'm not gonna stop you if you wanna to come to this altar this morning, that's okay. But I'm going to ask you right where you're at. We're going, to, we're going to close in prayer in just a moment. Will you just recommit your life to Jesus Christ? And, as, and as, as eyes are closed, if you're going to recommit your life to Jesus Christ, I want you to hold your hand up high and strong. Or either you come to this altar and pray, and if you need to talk to me or one of the deacons, they'll be here to talk with you and pray with you. The important thing is today that I'm ready to take a stand for Jesus Christ. Christ is seeking. And he's asking, what are you going to do with me? What are you going to do with me? Bow with me, if you would, please. Heavenly Father, your words are so true. It echoes from the very depth of our soul. And it... And it it just speaks to us, Father, and it tells us who we are and what we ought to be about. And it, Father, your word shows us what we ought to be doing. Father, during this, this time, here this, this morning, before we dismiss, Father, if there are decisions or recommitments or rededications, or if there are things, Father, uneasiness within the depth of our soul that, Father... I know you never wanted that to happen. So Lord, help us everyone to resolve right now that this is the day that my life's going to be different from this point forward. My relationship with you is going to be deeper and stronger than it's ever been. If there's anyone here or anyone that's online that needs to rededicate or recommit their life or does not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, I pray that this is the day that they're going to come to know Christ as Savior of his or her life. Help this to be the day, Father, in our life. If you're here this morning, you want to rededicate or recommit your life. Maybe you're not ready to come down to this altar, or, and you don't have to come to this altar, but... Maybe it's simply just raise your hand if you're ready to recommit your life. Will you slip up your hand right now if you'll just say to Jesus Christ, Lord, this day I come to you. I recommit my life to dedication. I'm seeing the hands go out all over this sanctuary. If you're at home, will you just slip up your hand? I'll promise you Jesus is seeing every hand, every person's life, and that as we go forth in here, I don't want you to carry out all that baggage that you brought in. I don't want to see you carried out, but more importantly, Jesus doesn't want you to carry it out. He said, bring it to me, and he said, I'll take care of it. Leave it with me. Thank you for being here. Thank you for, for you for your faithfulness. We're asking all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Thank you, folks uh, that are at home. 
and online. Thank you for your presence and your faithfulness. We're grateful that you're with us here also and each one that's here in our sanctuary. If you live in the area, we would invite you to come and be a part of us. We'd love to have you. May God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Take care.